What's good, everybody? Welcome into the Early Edge, your daily sports betting brand of record. We are powered, as always, by the almighty sports slot. The best value in all sports betting, and it's not close. I see many of you in the chat already being very, very active. I need you to pound that like button for me. It helps the show, and it helps us grow. Now, real quick disclaimer, when I'm all off on Saturdays, sometimes many, not, I won't say many of you, some of you, feel like you've got all these keyboard warrior guts inside of you. Don't think I don't see you. 44 and 13. We're handing you cash. One minor slip up? It wasn't even a slip up. Four and seven? And you know who you are. You know who I'm talking to. But the rest of you, we love you all. Let's go ahead and look at what we did yesterday. Another good day at the brand. Seven and four on straight picks. All we try to do is win more than we lose. So let's keep that heater going and bring in the stars of the show on this Sunday brunch version. And I see a couple of you watching for the very first time. Welcome to the brand. Now, look who we have today. Now, when you put this man and you back him into a corner, you won't like it very much. We call him the bullpit, Johnny B. Good morning, sir. Good morning, coach. Yeah, wild game in college baseball yesterday. Ruined all the underplays, but we've got a couple of good plays today. We're going to get back after it. I love seeing those gifts whenever like there's those late runs that mean nothing in a game, but they mean something to somebody. Now, this man, he is covering all kinds of sports for us. You just never know. But today, today's NASCAR Sunday. Michael Roberts, good morning, sir. Good morning. And it feels kind of lonely. No uh, McClure. And it's like the boxes. we got a lot of room here to, you know, move our elbows and everything. I like it. Uh, it's, yeah, really exciting. A week off from NASCAR. So I'm itching to go. I can smell that high octane fuel. And I'm just inhaling it and loving it we got nascar racing nashville style today man it is going to be so much fun we'll talk more about that coming up my guess is if you're talking nascar in nashville somewhere somewhere a b is lurking i don't know somewhere a b is lurking all right let's get into it storylines that could affect the betting lines today and johnny i'm going to start with you because you said it crazy game yesterday in the college world series a kind of a weird start today 3 p.m eastern time and a chance to crown a champion talk to me yeah so afternoon game today uh second game of the series oklahoma was down four two two outs in the eighth yesterday before three back to back to back bombs which is pretty crazy in a ballpark that there aren't many bombs in general but i wanted to give you guys a quick insight into college baseball and why i play my live unders in general uh but today they had the oklahoma will have their dominant freshman starting in cade horton uh, Oklahoma, Ole Miss will counter with their own freshman lefty in Hunter Elliott. The reason I usually wait for the live unders is because in these big games, pitchers are usually unsettled early. It doesn't matter how good the pitcher is. I, I actually think the best pitchers get hit early before they get settled in. So if you let them get settled in, that's when they start to dominate. If you notice Jake Bennett, Oklahoma starter yesterday, he really didn't give up many hits early in the early going. He got a couple runners on and had a couple wild pitches, which was him being unsettled. And then a couple singles, which would bring those runners in from second and third, as opposed to first with two outs. So we saw that yesterday and with two freshmen starting this game, I want to use my own eyes to see if these guys are missing spots or throwing balls, because if either team scores in the first couple innings, it just gives us a big number to play the under. If they don't, it really doesn't change from the pregame numbers. So look out for another live under from me if we have the right circumstances today. Follow my guy on social media. I tell you all the time. You just never know where there's going to be a cash ticket just waiting around the corner. Now, you heard Mike talk at the top of the show. And you know that sports line that powers us, that pays us, that is the engine that is us, is in Nashville, Tennessee. It's our home. So, Micah, today NASCAR invades our home, but we're here for it. The floor is yours, sir. Yeah, and I'm, I'm happy. You know, the, the track was dormant since 2011 until they came last year. And uh, ironically, the guy who did it, his company, Speedway Motorsports, he just passed away. Bruton uh, Smith, rest in peace. Thank you for bringing tracks to Las Vegas, Texas, everywhere around the country. But bought the Nashville track, put it on the cup schedule, and here we are for the second straight year. So, uh, 1.3 mile concrete layout, 14 degrees of banking, no track like it in NASCAR, very unique, only the third concrete track. We've got the Dover, 
and Bristol as well. And that's kind of what I u- utilized when I went over the guys I liked this week. And obviously, I looked at the practice from Friday, starting lineup from yesterday. But there's some guys in there that uh, could be good long shots, like Eric Almarola. He was fourth in this race last season. It was kind of the turning point in his season. And he would come back later to win at New Hampshire a couple of weeks later. Ricky Stenhouse, always really good on the concrete tracks. He is 50 to one. Almarola, by the way, is 35 to one now at Caesars. Um, those are some long shots that I look at. And then you saw the top of the practice speed on Friday. Bubba Wallace at 100 to one was fastest. And we saw his teammate, Kurt Bush, win a couple of weeks ago at Kansas. He's a guy you might want to look at. I mean, I don't really endorse betting him, but I mean, he's first in practice. That means something. So we'll see how long uh, he can last there. And Kurt Bush is another guy. But I think the guy that we need to look at right out of the gate is Kyle Bush. Um, he is the concrete king. He has been amazing. I'll talk more about him in a matchup coming up. Uh, also, uh, Chase Elliott, he's 10 to 1. He's had his odds drop because he wasn't apparently very good in practice. But what I like about him is that he won at Dover. And that was a couple weeks ago. So Dover was a, a good turning point. And Dover, it's a mile track, but it's 24 degrees in banking. But the the surface, the sticking point, it's much different than the asphalt. So there's a, a few drivers that are really good on concrete tracks. And We'll, we'll talk about a couple of them. And uh, who's another long shot here? Oh, uh, Christopher Bell talked a little bit about, about him yesterday. I think he has a good shot to win, too, 18 to 1 odds. All right. A lot of good information there. A lot of NASCAR. A lot of NASCAR today. I'm here for it. All right. We got to get to our board for the day. But before, you know, we've grown so big that we've got to take some breaks, not long breaks, very, very short breaks. So here's a word from one of our partners. And we are back. It's time to get to our board for the day. And you know, coming off a 7-4 and four day, we were 44-13 and 13 before Friday. I see many of you in the chat, too, going, what happened to Major League Baseball? Understand, no matter what show you watch or what brand you watch, it's the same guys playing. There's going to be days where there's regression. That's part of sports betting. You can't go 44-13 and 13 all the time. All right? So just understand that and relax when you have a 4-7 and seven day. It happens. Money management. All right. Two big plays today. I looked at the numbers, and I saw 19 straight times Colorado has not done back-to-back losses. 19 straight games without back-to-back losses. We're going to take the Avalanche tonight. Very small number because they're on the road. It's going to be difficult. Closing things out in Tampa, but we're going to go against the grain, and we're going to take the Avalanche, minus 115. Then we're going to take the Dodgers. Team total over four, minus 140. In Atlanta, they're facing Spencer Strider. His ERA is north of five. Dodgers have scored at least four runs in four of their last five games. So let's keep that trend rolling here on this Sunday. Now, I'm going to go right back to the well because you just heard all that good information. I want it to be marinating as we get two, two big matchups today from NASCAR in Nashville. So, Michael Roberts, start us off. Yeah, we got a couple of them. Start off with Kyle Busch. I think he's the best concrete driver we have in the Cup Series right now. Uh, it's dollar ten against Denny Hamlin, who's on the pole. And Kyle Busch, I just think he has been better all season long, consistent 11 top 10s in the Cup Series after 16 races. And it's been a wild 16 races. you got 13 different drivers that have won at least one race. Four drivers have won two. And tracks at 1.3 miles and higher, nine different winners is crazy. So it's it's almost a crapshoot. You can kind of pick anybody and feel confident that you have a shot until you don't towards the end. Kyle Busch, concrete, eight wins at Bristol, three wins at Dover. He's got five wins at Nashville Super Speedway, uh, four of them before the closure in 2011. He won the Xfinity race last year, won an ARCA race, two truck series race. He just loves this track. He loves concrete. He's going to be very good, probably going to win the race, but he should be able to beat Denny Hamlin in a matchup. And then Joey Logano is a guy I like $1.15 against his teammate, Ryan Blaney. Logano has a win, a 2009 win at uh, Nashville. He's been good on concrete his entire career as well. I look for him to uh, do extremely well. Two wins this season. The ones that impressed me the most, the 1.3 mile track at Darlington. That's a high bank track, completely different from this track, but the distance is key. And then he also won the flat track at St. Louis or outside of St. Louis across the river. Um, that's the guy that has, has shown that his team puts it together. And when they show a little bit in practice or qualifying, they show up on race day. So Logano's a guy I'm going to look to, to beat his teammate out who's, you know, 
Ryan Blaney has just kind of been, um, they haven't met their mark yet. So he's a guy I'm going to bet against here. All right. So Kyle Busch and Joey Logano in the head to head matchup. Yes. NASCAR, much like PGA Tour golf, I tell you all the time head to head matchups is where you're going to make your money. Don't try to do the futures or the winning bets. Oh, I still do, Coach. I got oh, I know. But you also do head to head. You also yeah. do head to head. Oh, I'm yeah. saying pe people that just love to do winners, those are the ones that go broke. And say, oh, I was so close. Yeah. yeah. Every ticket. All right. So. Micah started us off. I'm going to come in in the middle because today I had three plays that I like, but I'm currently on a 16-3 and three heater. So I had Mikey's voice in my head. I had Johnny B's voice in my head. I said, Sunday, just relax a little bit. So the two overs I was going to play, I'm going to pull those back, and I'm only going to play one. The Reds are terrible. The Giants, you give me the Giants minus 150 or lower, I'm going to take them every single time time i don't need to break this game down red's terrible minus 150 or lower bang it all day long giants minus 150 all right johnny b i gave you the respect that you have so desperately demanded from me you have the maestro spot on a day on a day when a champion could be crowned be very very careful you're up yeah, coach, on a day where two champions could be crowned. But oh. I got two plays. Yeah, I got two plays today. Oklahoma plus 110 versus Ole Miss. I'm not giving up on Oklahoma already, especially not at plus money here. Ole Miss used their closer last night while Oklahoma was able to save theirs. So the entire Oklahoma lineup was able to see the Ole Miss closer's pitches, and he should be a little worked if he does appear in tonight's game. This is an interesting stat. Five out of the last six championship series have been won by the team that lost game one, including three straight. So losing game one in the championship series isn't necessarily a big deal. I think nerves played a big factor in game one for Oklahoma, where Ole Miss kind of looked as if they were just happy to be there. Oklahoma should be settled in tonight. And I think they at least force a game three. So I like Oklahoma at plus money here. And then I've got one MLB play. We're going to go Guardians minus 110 versus the Red Sox at home. Aaron C. Valley actually pitched very well in his return from the IL. And I think he'll be solid again today. I don't love backing him. But in this avoiding a sweep at home scenario, I don't mind it. You kind of have to overlook starting pitchers in a sense. Rich Hill has been decent, but he doesn't get deep into games. And he's probably the most gettable pitcher on the Red Sox staff. The Guardians are actually pretty bad against lefties this season. But they get to add Fran Mel Reyes and Oscar Gonzalez, both righties, back into the lineup today, a combination they haven't had for most of the season. These are two of the hottest teams in baseball entering the series, and the Guardians' bullpen has been very good if they could just get a lead in the series. So I like the Guardians to avoid the sweep at home here. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize how hot the Guardians are right now. Uh, by the way, uh, Johnny, you know we have another very, very good – no, not good – great capper – and it was revealed recently that his nickname was Little Chippetto in another life. So I'm in the chat right now, and Elliot says, Maestro spot for the boulder. Is there something we should know? Is there another another life that, that, that we didn't know that you had where you're called the boulder? Is there I, anything I've anything been called... Coach, I've been called a lot of things in my life, and Boulder is not one of them. <laughs> All right. If you say so, hey, if you say so, Alex somewhere is going, little Geppetto, little Geppetto, come join us, Boulder. Come join us. True story. Mike, we can't make this stuff up sometimes. Mike is like, what am I doing on this show? Every time you come on, I feel like you're like, what is this? All right. Grab your paper. Grab your pencil. Here is the recap. I'm amazed that A.B. could get out of bed this morning at the parties he was seen at last night. Johnny B., he's on OU to stave off elimination. Guardians to stave off Sunday elimination. Micah, two head-to-heads. Kyle Busch over Denny Hamlin. Joey Legato over Ryan Blaney. If you're going to cash with me, and I'm on a serious, serious heater right now. You're going to deal with the Giants. Money line minus 150. Then two plays for Sportsline. And if you're not a Sportsline member, what are you doing? Avalanche. Dodgers team total. Now, AB, <clears throat> show your face. Where's that big old fat smile that I love so much? Hey, uh, uh, you got like a pounding headache this morning. You're out there, all the NASCAR parties in Nashville. Well, I'll tell you this. We are actually operating uh, a little injured here. 
Oh, yeah. really? What, what happened? Yeah, take a look at this. We've, we're all, we're operating on one eye. Hold on, let me show you this. One eye. All right. Yeah. Can you see this? Oh my God! What happened to you? Yeah. Yeah. Bust it up. Uh. Well, I don't really know. Um. I think we. Uh, <laughs> it, it's, I don't know what happened yet, but we're operating on one eye here, and it's brutally hurting me. However, it's been going on all weekend, and we're gonna do nothing but show up to work, do our job, hit seven and four days, and move it on. So yeah. Well, I mean, anytime I can make Micah laugh, I'm here for it. Um, yeah. could you can you take a one shot again on you, please? I really want to see that eye up close one more time. Yeah. Can you take a that there you go? It, it, holy Brutal. cow, A B. I don't know yeah. if I should if I should tease you or if I should call nine one one. I don't <laughs> know what I should do. Yeah. I'm well the good the good thing is this. It's not some sort of like medical thing. It's not like that at all. It's also, you know, we, we didn't go out. Yeah. And, you know, catch, you know, a three piece of hands to the face in a fight. Right. Like it's nothing like that. But I did run into something and it's just insanity. So, yeah, I got one word for you. Antibiotic. Antibiotic. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, if you can, if you feel healthy enough. Could you take us through the AB3 today, oh, please? Always, always, Coach. Look, all right, so we're going to go three plays here. So Oklahoma on the money line. We spoke about this on Saturday. It's part of the plan. We're all set there. Uh, John uh, Bowman ran through that. Love it. He's absolutely correct. Second, Brewers team total over four. We're going to play that minus 125. Look, they're going up against they're going up against pretty good pitching. However, they've scored four runs or more in four straight. And I didn't want to bet the game because my man Chi-Chi Gonzalez is starting – for Milwaukee today, I think he's going to have a good game, but it's tough to bet on dudes who are in the you know the second you know <laughs> overall start. We will stay away from that. A little bit risky. And then third, we're going to play the Avalanche team total over two and a half tonight, minus one sixty. Because all right, the last seven times that the Avalanche scored two goals in a game, one hundred percent of the time, the next game they scored three goals or more. All right, I mean, this has been going on for like three months, right? So I believe in them coming back. I believe in them putting it up. So not only do we have them on the money line, we're going to play them over two and a half as well. My man, Trajan, A.B. in the chat says, Coach, why you hit A.B.? Coach, why <laughs> you hit A.B.? <laughs> I hey, 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 hey co Coach is throwing stiff this morning. All right, now. <laughs> hey, we made up. We made up. It's all yeah, good. We're good. Hey, it's all for the best of the show. That's <laughs> We put it all for the best of the show. Oh, my man. Oh, you just never know. <laughs> Sunday brunch is supposed to be all nice and good flowers, rainbows and butterflies. And A.B. walks in looking like he was on UFC fight night last night. <laughs> hey, when, NAS <laughs> when NASCAR is in town, you never know what's going to happen, man. It's just an awesome <laughs> time. All right. Good show. Uh, see you. You're the man. All right. We'll see you later. <laughs> How can you not love A.B.? Are you kidding me right now? Are you, you never know. You never know. You never know. All right, that's about all the damage that we can do. We do this seven days a week, do it 365 days a year. Do not forget that we do Early Edge in 5 at 4 p.m. Eastern time every single weekday uh, as well. So tell all your friends if you want to be included, you want to be valued, you want to be at a sports betting brand that actually cares, this is the one. But no other brand does this or it would be gimmick infringement. And we don't do that here. There's only one thing left to do, and I believe you all know what that is you've got your marching orders let's take all of these tickets straight to the pay window for my entire crew love them all michael roberts are you kidding me johnny b a b on the ones and the twos i am the coach man i love doing this and today's gonna be another great day why because we speak it into existence right here at the early edge good luck